All right, gonna get y'all some better pictures of Uncle Johnny's uh, today because I know I filmed it at night yesterday. All right, so update. Hey, bird. Uh, Trey kind of made an executive decision last night to not go up the mountain today because it was supposed to be 70 mile an hour winds and sideways moving rain and then tomorrow is supposed to be freezing so he didn't want all our stuff to get frozen and you know wet and then frozen so he told us uh, you know late last night this morning that we're just going to zero here today I slept the best at this hostel in like 37 days I, I was just at peace with the world and slept so nicely uh, this is the hammock part of the hostel is brand new they just finished building it like I said each each spot for hanging a hammock has its own light and its own power uh, supply so that's just amazing <laughs> uh, this area out here you pitch tents if you can find a flat enough spot and uh I guess it was it was good to to take a zero uh for myself because I haven't had a zero since uh Knoxville and I might have I might have started feeling the trails doing you know more miles every day so you know hey uh, laundry machines, dryers, the sink back here. If you want to use a any of that, you can. They just say you know, just just wash it up when you're done. Whew, that wind. It's kind of chilly. Uh, the main bathrooms. And then the cold weather bathrooms that they can keep heated. One's a bathroom, one's a shower. The bikes that uh two hikers, two through hikers that started just a couple days after me. Um actually took two bikes into town today. And they were at the pizza place that we took the shuttle to. That's the, the main hostel that has, you know, like a six six or eight bunks in it. It's a little commons area where everyone just hangs out. And I'm going to show you. Like, look, this is the front of Uncle Johnny's. How's it going? And... That guardrail across the intersection is the Appalachian Trail. We are that close to the Appalachian Trail. So if if you don't stop here for a resupply or, or a drink, I mean, you're just you're selling yourself short because from no business shelter up there down there there is like no water source. Uncle Johnny? Yes, sir. You have a great hostel here. Great hostel. We try. Enjoy it. Thank you, Early Riser, for leaving that stuff on top of the microwave again. Uh, Cause I am uh, fixing me up some uh, ramen. Compliments, a la uh, Early Riser seventy one. So uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they were quick for me, and they're you know they brought it to my room. What are you recording? This place? Where you at the zero right there? Yeah. It's not every day you drive past a uh nuclear fuel facility. It's a lovely green fence right now. <laughs> They're coming out with some okay. ammo for the locals. Ask me where the hell was. Tell me a minute, so because it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And then she'll make a bunch of racist videos. That's pretty bad. 
Yeah, and she cut my hair, so she had scissors near my face. So I'm like, I'm not gonna tell her she's being raped. Okay, I am the biggest goofball on the trail. I did not see this little channel right here that this uh, support slides into. If I would have, yeah, that would have made setting up this tent so much more easier. So, uh, yeah, when you're doing that at night and first time in the dark, you know, yep, messed up. That's on me. But, uh, I'm going to spread this tent out, dry it off a little bit, because it, it kind of got rolled up wet the other day. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, setting up the tent ought to be a little easier now, because I'll be doing it the right way. Okay. Now, this is the inside of the tent, and now that I see that that goes through there, this process should be extremely faster it's so basically the tent five stakes is all you need I want to stake it up under this uh, hammock area to uh, seam steal it real fast so that it can cure this evening basically you take the one point Hopefully this is in view. And oh. uh, this war will work. <laughs> it's only a couple inches of rocks. <laughs> There's dirt under there. I'm like, mm, okay. Uh inside out 30 different times I do believe this is the way it goes All right, and I know the trekking pole has to be shorter than this, shorter than this one and longer than that one, but I don't know the exact height. So what I'm gonna do is squish this section all the way in, and then we're gonna guesstimate it with this being loose. And now that that part in there is actually attached this piece right here this ought to be a lot easier because when I was doing this the first time this whole thing was just like moving around all all it wanted to so. put you in there You're supposed to go we'll say there it's about a hundred centimeters all right you just lay down for a second so we'll match it up on this side that's another thing when I got out of this tent the other day these poles were were two different lengths. All right, so hundred. All right. And you back up. Put you inside. Right, we 
can make you a little taller. Wind. All right. So let's say that's a 115 mark there. I might go up even higher than that. <laughs> Take out these two sides. Somehow I managed to set this up right next to a picnic table. Oh yeah. That's so much more stable than when I did it last time. The last time that thing was just flying around in there. we can raise it up even a little farther. So now I guess I seam seal it everywhere there's a seam. Huh. I don't want to climb in there on those rocks, but uh, yeah, that's. That's a lot more sturdy. If I would have done this when I set it up the first time, it would have just fallen over. So, uh, yep, I am uh, sometimes not the brightest crayon in the in the box. Uh, but I manage. down Ooh. that might have been pulled a little too tall all right let's put you back over here and uh when i was at the outfitter in in hot springs they said the trekker was bigger like from head to foot than the uh 
Lunar Solo. He had both of them. And uh, I do see this little tab here where I can uh, hook it and tie it to something up behind my head where I'm standing now. It's because this is this is where my feet were. And my feet in the sleeping bag were touching th this. So, guy it out, I guess I can angle it up to a tree or a limb above me or something to just just raise that up. That'd give me, you know, about a foot clearance under there than just a couple inches. So, I'm learning. It's a slow process sometimes, but I'm learning. All right, gonna go get the seam steel. This is the first time I've ever uh, seam sealed a tent, so maybe I'm doing it the right way. I guess I'll find out when it rains. I mean, I make models and I'll spend hours doing custom paint jobs on them. Metallic base coats with see-through enamels and just make them get that show car finish. Uh, this, not so much. I'm just squeezing goop out of a tube, putting it on this little bristle brush, and uh, I think just doing this. So... Keep it away from the zippers, right? And the bug net. little dongle that will keep these two flaps up. If you want to roll all four parts of the vestibule up. Alright, we just got finished watching Logan. Uh, no spoilers, but it was a very dark movie. And... <laughs> Since there was no one else alive in Irwin, Tennessee on a Friday night at what is it, like 10 o'clock, yeah, we are, <laughs> we are uh, walking back to Uncle Johnny's Hostel, three, four something miles, and uh, we're in our Crocs, because <laughs> we're idiots. Because it's evidently <gasps> it's a person. purge night or we found a person. the zombie apocalypse happened while we were in... <laughs> Logan. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Don't trip. <laughs> we don't have our headlamps and we're tripping over sidewalks and culverts and roads. Where did all these people go? I haven't seen a single person outside. Porch, Maybe they cared and shared too much. Yeah. And I didn't square up with uh, the register before we went to the movie, so I gotta stick around for them to open in the morning. What time do they usually get started? Around six? Did he say? Ten. No, we can't get started at 10. 
uh, eight, and no. then they go to breakfast. So he's got to he's got to open up the, the the register before then. You think so? He said because he he said he makes coffee for the the early risers. Miles. Like it's not even that far. Uphill. So. Of a nice sloping gradual climb. We're gonna have very nice snow to help us upwards. The traction. We're going from like. 1,500 feet to 5,200 feet. We're still going the right way? Yep. We go this way and we pass the uh, uranium fuel oh, yeah. rod <laughs> department for nuclear submarines. Yeah. And then we take a right. And we don't get back to everybody's car. We're on our after dark tour of Irwin, Tennessee, where we're just walking down the main street here. To our left, we have one of the two hatcheries in town, which every two years deposit thousands of rainbow trout into the. Ship it up a little uh, river. Lo, lo, Lowly Chucky? Yeah, sure. Something Chucky River. Because they're awesome. Smells like a wet fart. <laughs> oh, that's just Martin's Creek Cemetery. To our right, we have the uranium processing plant that makes fuel rods for the nuclear subs. Fascinating! As we're still walking back to Uncle Johnny's. <laughs> well, it's 11 o'clock and we made it back to Uncle Johnny's. That's it right here, I think. Yeah, it's up here on this corner. There's the bridge that we're going to cross in the morning. The trail goes up and over that mountain. Yep. Everything you shouldn't do on a zero, we managed to do.